My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 164. Day 164. Day 3164. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 164. We are in the process of solving the math problems from the two practice tests that you will see at the very end of the book. We are, we are working on the second test on page number 492. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page 492. Problem number 12 is what we are about to do. In problem number 12, we are given a picture. This, which looks something like this. We are told that this is the right angle. We are told that this is right angle, we are told that this is right angle, this is the right angle, and this is the right angle. Without knowing that these angles are sitting at 90 degrees, we cannot solve this problem. Do you understand? It's important that we know that they are all perpendicular. We are told that from here to here is 9, this side is 12, from here to here, from, from here to here is 15, and this side is 8, and the question simply is, What's the area of this region? What is the area of this region? Well, it's very straightforward. There are a couple of ways we can go about it. We'll just go the direct way. Just complete this complete the complete this rectangle. If you complete this rectangle, then let's, let's give it a name here, rectangle A, B, C, D. If you complete the rectangle, then this rectangle just be plotted here, A, B, C, D. This rectangle is simply 12 by 15. 12 by 15. And then simply subtract the area of this tiny rectangle. And let's find out what, what the dimensions are there. Okay, here's what's going on. If B to C is 15, and from here to here is 9, then 15 minus 9, this side must be 6, from this, this length right here. Similarly, if A to B is 8, and from C to this point right here is 8, eight if A to B is 12 rather, if A to B is 12, and from here to here is 8, then this side must be 4. In other words, this rectangle that we're looking at is 6 by 4. So just take away 6 by 4. Just subtract the area of the small rectangle, which is 6 by 4, from 12 by 15, we are done. What is left over is the area of the shaded region. Let me redraw this thing, it's looking, it's, it's looking quite ugly now. So this is how it was given to us. We extended it, we make it complete, and simply subtract this one, which we found is 4 by 6. Of course it's 4 by 6 because 9 plus 6, 9 plus 6 will give us 15 and 4 plus 8 will give us 12. What is 12 times 15? What is 12 times 15? I know, I know 15 tens, 15 times 10 is 150. 150 is 10 fifteens. We don't have 10 fifteens, we have 12 fifteens. So we need 2 more fifteens and 2 more fifteens will be 30. So it's 180. Minus 24, that's it. Whatever 180 minus 24 is. We get a 6, 7 minus 2 is 5. There you go, this is our answer. 156 is the answer. The answer is 156. That's all. Number 12, but actually was not too bad. Maybe I made too much fuss about nothing at all. Because now that I look at the percentile, people did not find it too bad. 78% of people got this question right. Almost about, just about a fifth of the person, people missed it. Four fifth, almost four fifth got it right. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number, number 13. In 
And number 13, again, make sure, as I keep repeating like a parrot, make sure that the book is in front of you, because I'm not going to put the entire problem on the blackboard. I'm not going to put the problem in its entirety, because it's too long. If you look at it, it just goes on and on and on. I'm just going to give you the gist of it. I'm just going to give you the nub of it. I'm just going to put down the nub of the question. Here's what it says. It says, here we have total, total number of fish in a pond. Total number of fish in a pond. And we have two time periods. Time period 1 and time period 2. You read the problem yourself. Okay, there are two time periods. So in the beginning of the in the beginning we had 300 fish in the pond we are looking, about, looking at the pond and the 300 fish in the second period we had 400 fish and here is the percentage percentage of fish percentage that is catfish the first year we were told that 15% 15% of the population of the pond there were 300 there were 300 fish altogether in the pond and 15% were catfish. The following year is only 10%. The following year is only 10%. And what is the question asking? It says from the beginning, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, the number of catfish in the pond, what happened to the number of catfish? And they give us different different uh, different answer choices. So it's from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So let's to keep it simple. Typically, the beginning of the year we represent as T0 and T1. How do we read this thing? This thing is read as, this thing is read as T0. N-A-U-G-H-T. N-A-U-G-H-T. That's how we read it, that's how it's read from T0 to T1. So what happened to the, what happened to the, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, what happened to the number of catfish in the pond? And all the answer choices are written in percentages that you can see there. So let's do our work. So first thing we have to do here is to figure out what the number of catfish is, what the number of catfish is from the beginning of the year and what it, what it was at the end of the year. In the beginning of the year, we had 300 cat, we had we had we had 300 total fish. We had 300 total fish of which 15% were catfish. We know we know 10%. We know 10% of 30. 10% of 300 rather, 10% of 300 is 30. If 10% is 300, then 5% of 300 must be half as much, which is 15. 10% is 3, 10% of 300 is 30, 5% is 15, therefore 15% 15 of 300, 15% of 300 would have to be 45. So we had 45 catfish to begin with. The third column is the actual number, actual number of catfish. You understand? What happened at the end of the period? It, the number of fish increased from 300 to 400, but percentage of the catfish in the pool is only 10%. 10% 10 of 400 is 40. So what happened? Let's look at the answer choices. Typically, typically I do not put down all the answer choices on the blackboard, but this time we'll make an exception because it's a tricky one. Let's, let's, start, let's, let's start backwards. Let's start from E. E says, E says that it increased percentage. Is E says that the percentage of the catfish increased by five percent, increased by more than five percent. E says the cat, the population of catfish increased by more than five percent. Did the percent, did the population of catfish increase? Of course not. It went down. It went down from forty-five to forty. In the beginning, we had forty-five catfish in the pond. At the end of the period, we only had forty catfish. So obviously it did not increase by more than 5%. B says that the population of catfish increased by exactly 5%, which is also not true. It did not increase. C says it did not change. Of course it changed, clearly from 45 to 50. The question is, is the answer A or B? That's where we have to pay attention. Let's put down both of the answer choices on the blackboard. Answer choice A says, answer choice A says, that the percentage that the, that the catfish population decreased by more than five percent. It decreased by more than five percent. More than five percent. And answer choice B says that 
the population of catfish decrease by 5%. In other words, when they say 5%, they mean exactly 5%. We have to make a decision. Which one is it? Did it decrease by 5%? About a third of the people got this question wrong, and the people who got this question wrong are probably looking at this here. They're saying, well, it went from 15% to 10%, therefore it decreased by 5%. No, 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 that's not, that's not how we find the percentage. Decrease because the bases are different. If the bases were same, then you can say it used to be 15%, now it's 10%, so it went down by 5%. No, the bases are different. This is 15% of 300, this is 10% of 400. You see, if the bases were same, look, if the bases were same, for example, if it was 200 and 200, and before it was 10%, and now it's 5%, then 10%, 10% of 10% of 10% of 200 is 20, and 5% of 200 would be 10. Or oh, even in that case, it would not. Even in that case, you cannot simply say it decreased by 5%. You see, it decreased by 50%. It decreased by 50%. It went from 20 to 10. If it goes from 10% to 5%, that's a drop. Of course, it's a drop of 50% because it's half as many, half as many things because base is the same here. So there are two things wrong with it. People who pick. People who pick this answer that it decreased by 5%, they are doing two things wrong. First of all, you cannot simply subtract the percentage. Secondly, the base is different. Even if the bases were same, we just saw even if the base were same, you cannot subtract the percentage. Here, you cannot simply say it decreased by 5%. It decreased by 50% because if, if it used to be 10% of 200, 10% of 200 is 20. And then next year, it's 5% of 200. 5% of 200 is only 10. So it went from 20 to 10. That's a drop of 50%. It's not a drop of 5%. We cannot simply subtract the percentages. Do you understand? So let's do the proper work. Let's, well, the answer is A. There you go. We found the answer. The answer is A. So even though we found the answer, we're just going to do the proper work just for learning purposes. So let's find out. So what's the change? The change is 5, negative 5. Negative tells us that it dropped. It dropped by 5. And if you want to find out the percentage drop, this is our point of reference because that's where we're starting from. So it's 5 over 45 times 100. That will give us the percentage. But for the time being, let's just forget the 100 part. Let's figure out what this is. So, and let's forget the negative part. We already know, it's, we already know that it decreased, so we don't have to worry about it. We, know, we can see it's decreased. So 5 over, 5 over 45, that's 1 ninth. 1 ninth. And do you know how much 1 ninth is in decimal? 1 ninth is about 11%. It's about 11%. And if you didn't know it, just do it out here. 1 over 9, so we want to divide 1 by 9. We want to divide 1 by 9, just do it out. We need a decimal. When you produce a decimal, it becomes a 10. It goes 1 time, 9, we have a 1, round a 0. It goes 1 time, 9, round a 0, it just goes go on forever. 0.11111 are repeating. It's just 0.1 repeating all the time. So it's about 11%. So the correct answer here is that the percentage of the codfish drop by about 11 percent percentage of the catfish percentage or rather catfish percentage of of catfish dropped by about 11 percent or if you like you can say it dropped by little more than 11 percent but whether we say that it dropped by little more than 11 percent 11.11 percent whether we say that it dropped by little more than 11 percent or whether we say that it dropped by about 11% in both cases is perfectly correct. It's perfectly correct to say that it dropped by more than 5%. Of course it dropped by more than 5%. I just told you that it dropped by 11%. So if something that dropped by 11% is perfectly legitimate to say that it dropped by more than 5%. You see how they're playing the game with the words? The answer is A. The answer is A. And only about, this was number 13. This was number 13. Only about two-thirds of the people got it right. One-third missed it. One-third of the people missed it. Let's do number 14, shall we? Number 14 is on the same page. Let's get it out of the way. Before I completely forget it, before I completely forget it and before I end up erasing it, when did we learn when did, when did we learn the word not and nub? 
nub was on day number 11. Day 11. In the search box, in the search box, just put in, just put in GRE vocabulary words. GRE vocabulary words. Day 11, and the video will pop right up and learn, watch the videos and learn the word. No. And no, it was on day number 74. It's important, it is important that you work on your vocabulary if you have any hope at all of getting a decent score in the verbal part of the exam. I know you're working on the math part because you're here, but you mustn't forget the other half. Number 14. We are told that we have red light. We, we are told that we have a red light that flashes every six seconds. We are told that we have a blue light that flashes every ten seconds. And we are told that at some point both lights were on. If both lights, if both lights flash together at a certain time, then how many seconds, how many seconds later, How many seconds later will they both flash together again? So I'm looking at the two lights right now. As I, as I look at them, as I'm watching them, they are both flashing together right now. As I, as I look at them, the red light and the blue light, they're both flashing together as I look at them now. I want to find out how many seconds will lapse before they both flash again together. Well, it's a simple LCM problem. We have to find here, here, we have to find the least common multiplier of 6 and 10. Even though we don't have to go through all that, all that trouble and make a fuss about it, because it's too simple. But had it been more complicated number, that's what we would have done here. How do we find the LCM? Let's do it here, we don't need any of this now. Let's find the LCM of 6 and 10. 6 and 10. What's the smallest prime factor? What's the smallest prime factor that is, the com that is common to both of them? 6 and 10. The smallest prime factor is 2. We get a 3 and we get a 5. That's, the, that's where the story ends. Because 3 is the prime number, 5 is the prime number, 2 is the prime number, now we have prime factors. And the, and the, and the product of these three prime factors will be the least common multiplier. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30. In other words, in other words, 30 is the smallest number that is that happens to be 30 is the smallest number that happens to be multiple of both 6 and 10. 30 is a multiple of 6 because 6 times 5 is 30. 30 is a multiple of 10 because 10 times 3 is 30. It's, it's the smallest multiple of both 6 and 10. Hence the least common multiplier. The smallest common multiplier, least common multiplier. The smallest common multiplier of 6 and 10 is 30. There is your answer. 30 seconds. 30 seconds later they will flash together. 30 seconds later they will flash together because here is what's going on. They are flashing together right now. At, at zero point, at zero point here we have red and here we have blue. They are flashing together right now. They are, they, are both, they are both flashing. And then what happens? Every six seconds the red is going to flash. Every six second red is going to flash. So six, the red is going to flash at 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30. Every six seconds it flashes, the red one. Let's put the red one in red ink. Every, every six seconds it flashes. Every six seconds the red one flashes. What about the blue one? Well, the blue one is flashing right now. As you can see, blue one is flashing right now. And they are both flashing together. When is the blue one going to flash again? In 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, right here, in 10 seconds. And then it's going to flash again at 20 seconds. Somewhere between 18 and 24. And then it's going to flash again at 30 seconds. That's when they're going to flash again together. When it flashes at 10 seconds, the red one is not going to flash, obviously. At 20 seconds, the red one is not flashing. At 30 seconds, they flash together. Every 30 seconds, every... Uh, in the cycle of every 30 seconds you will see them flashing together. 
given the fact that one flashes every six seconds, the other one flashes every ten seconds. This was number 14. And number 14, again, if you're curious, only in the event that you're curious, 72% had no trouble with it. But at the same time, 28% of people did not get it right, which is no good. Tomorrow when we meet, we're going to work on problem number 15 and 16. Let me very quickly look in the back to see how bad 15 and 16 are. But well, they're not too bad. 15 is 58 percentile, 16 is 46 percentile. We'll see. We'll see. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.